it in the you know the YouTube channel for everybody to watch. And if it's not appropriate, then I'll just send it to you guys if you want it. Is that he's, fair? Saying that, he's saying that yeah. for you, Caitlin. He's saying that for you. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, you guys are just meeting me. I'm trouble. So I'm just sorry. that's what happens. We're always trouble. So for those who showed up late, I did not have a topic for today, right? Like I you know, sometimes I try to have a topic. We'll talk about, you know, stuff like last week, the last one stuff, stuff we didn't know, right? Like some people knew stuff about looking at resumes and whatever. So today's was kind of like open. What does anybody want to talk about? We talked a little bit about Nick. He's he actually got the beta for the workflows. And any of you who don't have the beta for the workflow. Um, the, the workflow that they're working on and releasing has triggers in it. So when you're working through your job, if you send an email to someone, they'll automatically move from sourced or long or short list into contacted, right? And if you submit it to a client, they'll automatically move to submit it to the client. Yeah, and we did the, you know, the, the sourcing links. I know a lot of people here know about that because we did that. Dean was on last Friday on the uh, round table. I'm not actually yeah. not in beta. They converted me. Okay. Yeah. And I think they are slowly converting people. I don't think it's yeah. a beta anymore. I think you have to ask and they'll convert you. Does yeah, anybody well, else here cool. have the new workflow? Does anybody want to know about the new workflow? <laughs> sure. Okay. So <laughs> I'll show the new workflow. Um, let me go with this again. Um, you know, Tom. Uh, versions of what? Oh, yeah, that's sourcing link. Yeah, thanks, Dave. Um, Tom has a very long workflow, right? His workflow is insane. He's got, you know, because of the work that he does, he has, we emailed him, we texted him, we phoned him, they uh, they responded to an ad, right? I Mine is not as in-depth, right? So, but what you can do um, for your job is you can create, once the workflow, they give you a, a basic workflow, okay? So the basic workflow, correct me if I'm wrong, Nick, is um long list short list outbound screening submitted to client client interviewing rejected or hired i added yeah, offer pending. a little off no a little off no. okay what are they it, uh, i have long list short list outbound screening submitted interviewing rejected hired long list short list outbound screening submitted interviewing rejected hired yeah okay yeah so i i added offer pending yes yeah, screening <laughs> and i um changed long list to sourced right so the way that we do a search like as you can see these people applied i don't get a lot of applications but these people did he's a manager on duty at motel six for a sales rep for structural steel so that's the kind of applications i get and then short list is people that will source ourselves. Sometimes I will sort put put source people in long list or sourced if I'm not 100% sure if they're the right person or not, but I think they might be. And then the short list is where I put the ones that I know that are rock stars. So if right now I was to email Tammy or call Tammy from Loxo, if I was to email her right now from Loxo or Brandy Smith, right? She has a phone number. So if I was to pop her open and message her, right? And that's her work number. If I was to end it, let's just say it was an essay and I messaged her, it would automatically move to outbound. It would show that, um, and, and that's what's here. So Sage is working on this. She, if she called these people, they automatically moved. If she emailed them, they automatically moved, right? Like I called this person, uh, Hannah Hamrick, she automatically moved over. And, and you can move them you yourself only, as well. You have to do it from the job board in order to hit that trigger right so if you go into their profile and email them that way it's not going to trigger is that correct no but yeah because it won't be attached to that job if you just email a candidate it won't do that right. um okay. so in then, doing that right. in doing that time do you have to do anything or go into beta and click something yeah, yeah. so you you have to ask um Loxo to give you access to it right but the workflow is here workflow set up right so um, and so there's the triggers, right? So it'll show you in sourced, right? Which is long list for Nick, right? In right. that, uh, if they apply, they automatically go in there. If I mark them as maybe in Loxo sourced, uh, they automatically go in there. If Loxo AI sources them, they automatically go in there. And then if we source them on our own, they automatically go in there, right? And then right. on shortlist, if you mark it as yes, 
inside a locksync source, they automatically go into shortlist. Um, on outbound, if you send them an SMS, call them. If they send you an SMS, right? If they happen to like, you know, you call them and they text back that number, they will automatically move, right? Uh, if you send them an email, if they reply to an email, if they call you, they will all move it to. Um, so to screen. when you do that, when you do that, Tom, could you hit? Yeah, I'm that, sorry, to outbound. Can you hit that managed all triggers to see what that looks like? Oh yeah, yeah. yeah. So it'll here. Yeah, just manage right all here. triggers. Yeah. Yeah, and and real quick, so this is my on screening. If we write an interview note or they fill out a form, they automatically move to screening. So like in Tom's case, when they apply, if they fill out a form, he could have it set up where they automatically move to screening or they move to a workflow that says, look at this person's uh, stuff, right? So and they go into, for a guy like Tom or anybody here who uses a lot of um, applications, you know, got a lot of people applying, it can go from applied if they fill out a form you send them or you ask them to do something, you can set the trigger up and then they'll move over to uh, screening and let you know like, hey, uh, this guy filled out a form, now it's time to read the form. Does that make sense? That makes sense. Okay. But when you so hit here, oh, go, go ahead. No, no, yeah, I, I just wanted to see this, what you did there. To yeah, see what so the these are the triggers, right? And they, you can see the, yeah, the built-in ones and then the ones that I've added. And you can, and then you can ask where you want the trigger to go, right? So if they apply, they go to source. But I could have them if they apply just to go rejected because all my applies are mo are schmoes, for example, right? If they have a form filled out, right now I have them going to screening. But like Tom, he could create a, a workflow, right? That's called, um, you know, filled out form, and you can move it to there. Does that make sense? Yeah. So you can. Yeah. If the if, and then the only ones that work auto are the built-in ones, right? So um, if you try to make one, they have it that's not set up yet where your trigger will automatically can do something. So theirs are the ones that do something. So if someone sends it, if we send them an email, that's a built-in trigger, and then we can decide when once we send them an email from within Loxo where we want it to go, what workflow we want it to go to, right? If they fill out a form, we can decide where they want them to go to. If uh, we call them, we can decide where we want it to go to. Um, uh, so if you, yeah, go to so, a, if you go to a candidate's I, record and send them an email, again, that won't move it into outbounds, will it? No, 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 no. So if you just go to a regular, if I go to a regular right. candidate, Josh Roberts right here and send him an email, He's not going anywhere. I got to do it from the card from within yeah, the you job. Have, well, you have to do it from the job. Within the job, if you want the candidate to move within your workflow, however you have your triggers set up, right? So whatever, whatever your triggers are, you have to work through your workflow. That's the whole point of it is. Like in a perfect so the, world, you have – go ahead. I'm sorry, Andy. So the workflow and pipeline are the same word. Yeah, well, when it, when you switch, pipeline won't be there anymore unless you consider this to be a pipeline. Yeah, that's what I mean. That's what I consider to be a pipeline. Yes, yes, but yes. Pipe, yes, yes. Same, yeah, yeah. Pipeline, workflow, same. Because every every once in a while, they'll be using different words for the same thing, and I found that I don't know exactly. Can't give you an I, example. I guess that's a good point. I have twenty one people in my pipeline, right? Or do I have twenty one <laughs> plus fourteen? in my pipeline, right? Yeah. So starting out on a new search, if everybody was in source, you would have 54 people in your pipeline. And then as yeah. you started working, you could look at your pipeline and see who moved to screening, who moved to outbound, who your recruiters well, are calling, who your recruiters are screening, et cetera. Yeah, no, no, I, I just wish sometimes they, on on, on, on the description, they would have, <laughs> they'd have workflow and then they call it pipeline when they look at it here, you know. And, and sometimes I've found that to be different. So I just got to know what the different words are for the same thing. Yeah, so that's the, the and again, um, get a settings. The workflow. <laughs> yeah, there are all your triggers right here. 
And there are a lot, like there's ones down here that I don't do the outreach because right, we don't do the, and I probably, since Melody started doing this, I should probably go back and fix these. So I've added a Z to it. So they dropped at the bottom because we don't use them. But on outreach, you when you do an outreach, you can even set them up to move through your workflow as well, right? So if you have a, a job you're working and you're gonna send all the candidates in the, in the short list, an email in, and in a text, right? Through outreach, if they, once they get an email and outreach, they'll move through to wherever you want. Outreach is the same thing as campaign. Yes, Jeff McAdams. Yeah, that's the same thing. Outreach campaign is basically the same thing. So um, then on the stages, like here are my stages, right? And you can move the stages around and then you can add a stage. Remember I said, Tom's got a bunch. If you wanna change sourced to long list or applied or whatever it is, you, you can set this up and then have the triggers go to where you want them to go. Right, so, Question. so you know, like, go ahead. The, when you, you said the outreach and the campaign are the same, is not the campaign when you do the whole outreach thing multiple yes yeah, email. yeah that outreach campaign cadence Out they're all the same thing yeah that's what I, how do you handle the not interested in that they workflow? go to rejected right so they go like if i um go to a job right so it could be rejected um, by the candidate or the client yeah yeah, oh, yeah and that, and again you could set that up if you wanted to too like you know depending on how thing but like if if um if i Isn't talk to tammy there, you and she tells me to then. go pound sand I'm sorry. It automatically pops up, sorry. doesn't it? Yeah, like uh, yeah, you can um, see that first thing you hit no on the one on the, yeah, on the left. Yeah, so she's marked as yes, but I could hit um, uh, reject entire stage, and it'll ask me why I want to reject it. No, no, right. you, 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 you can put your own words in too as well. Yeah, can but, you edit but, that? that? I had a question about that. I don't know where to edit the rejected reasons. Okay, let me go to somebody over here. I'll show you real quick. Thanks. So uh, Daisy Christie, we already rejected her, but I'm going to reject her again just so we can show you. So um, Christie. reject candidate. It's going to say now at this point here, you have a drop down under qualified, but I could write a uh, test for Caitlin. And spell your name wrong because I'm sorry. And then just hit create new <laughs> rejection reason. Text for Caitlin. Hit reject. I didn't even see that. Thank you so much. Yeah. That's and actually then, super helpful. But here's what to remember, right? So if you're not paying attention, like my dumbass always does, right? Uh, let me go to her again. Um, reject candidate. Uh, look at the reasons we've actually had. We have um, job board loser. He's a dick. Told Mike he's not interested. Old. Took a job. No, wife wears the pants. No, like you. Like no, you'll no, get you'll get pissed and you'll type it in there and then you get all this stuff. Oh, be careful. <laughs> no, no, what, what, I I gonna, love that. what I'm going to say is if you type it there, right, and if you see it at the bottom and you go to the bottom and hit it, it will show up. So Yeah, 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 yeah. So, so now don't, I, can, don't, I can don't, reject don't get into the, Don't get into the habit of going to the yeah. bottom and clicking it there. Just yeah, type it up type and it, let it go. Yeah. Where, yeah, if you want to have a reason, go ahead. Is, is that data stored in activity? Yes. Fact, yeah. So if you go reason. here to Christy. Yeah. Hold on. Let me go to her now. We can go to Christy and look at activity and see that she was rejected candidate by recruiter. Right. So whatever reason she told me to go pound sand, I don't remember. And then that see if you pick the reason, it will show you the reason. And then it will also say who rejected it. Right. <laughs> was it rejected by the candidate? Was it rejected by the recruiter? Was it rejected by the hiring authority? And for whatever reason. Right. So in your, in the world of tech, you know, reports, you could do that. And and also, if you wanted to edit the reason for rejection and you don't like what you put there, you can go to this segment there at the twelve fifty six and delete that, and then go back and rewrite yeah, what you yeah. want. To I can yeah, I can delete that. It's gone. I can go reject her again and put in something else. Yeah, be nice. Of course. Be nice. And then Thank I you. think you can also um, in the settings section. Um, there, I think there's a spot for deleting the stuff, right? Wherever there's somewhere in here, Tom. Um, let 
roles. Job contact. Job. Yeah, one of the person. Um, yeah, one of the one of the uh, there's a there's a place where you can um, delete the bad ones, right? All the weird stuff I have. So I don't remember where it is, but there's a place where the rejection reasons are. Oh, okay. And then the new report. Have you guys seen the new reports and how the hired works, like for your teams? Tom, I'm assuming you know that, right? Yeah, I do, but I, I, I don't really – I'm not a fan of the new reports, to be honest with you, so I still use okay, the, so the like, old one. There's our like, – we can look at the leaderboard, right? And um, it'll show, you know, that's so far what I've cashed in, what Mike's done, what Sage has done, what Melanie's done, right? And then uh, – let me go over here, the reports. And then you can look at the report here and see what the details are. And when you do a placement, right – you can do it so it'll show who gets what part of the fee, 25%, 50%. I don't remember where that is, but it'll show like when you go and you hit hired and you fill out all the, all the information, it'll say, um, it's what, uh, you know, who, if, who, who gets, if Mike gets 50%, I get 50%. If Sage gets 25%, I get 75. And then it'll send them an email letting them know they made a placement and how much their placement was. So I don't know if it's important to anybody, but that's – and yeah, we have these set up, but we don't – like search is added, right, submitted, first interviews. I just put in there – I wanted to do a million this year, so that's the only real target that I have. But for – you know, when I always tell people, like, send out a day, keep the manager away, right? So if you can get 50 <laughs> – if you can get 20 first-time send-outs a month, right, you'll make at least two deals. So, you know, you can set this up so your employees can, like, look at where they are in their um, – and, and there's a default board, and then you can add all these different things, you know, candidate by stage, activities by owner. It doesn't matter how many calls a person made, right? Like, I don't even want to look at that. Uh, Aaron made 13, I've made 7, and Melanie made 1 <laughs> today, right? So – and you can, you can, you know, if you're worried about your candidate, you know, your employees, if they're making the calls, you can look only, at this. Only if you made them within Luxo. Through Luxo, yep. And I try to really stress, we have a, we're interviewing a new um, recruiter, hopefully today or Monday. I stress, like, hey, when you're working on a search, call through Luxo, right? Email through Luxo. That's what the triggers are there for. That's what the reporting. You can yeah. go, if I get hit by a bus, anybody can come behind me and see. All the stuff that I've done, right? Who I called, who I emailed, who's rejected, right? If you do that in Loxo, if you stay up with it, like I, I, and I'm look, I'm as bad as the next guy to do it too. But I realized how good this could be if we really utilized it. Now, but the only problem with that is if you use the Loxo number, your name never appears unless, because like for me. There's a town called Cherry Valley. It'll say Cherry Valley. It will never say Ernie Moreno. And I've asked them if they could change it, and they said no. And then, so unless, say, your client understands those two numbers and has changed the Cherry Valley to Ernie Moreno within their their uh, phone list, it's always going to say Cherry Valley. Sometimes when you really want to get a hold of somebody and you want to make sure they know it's you, you may go to your mobile phone or your other phone that you use, not the Loxo. Try the Loxo. Yeah, yeah, I, you try the yeah, Loxo, but when you get a response, go to your regular phone, and I found that I've done that. Then they pick up the phone. They go, hey, what's up? Hey, who's this Cherry Valley stuff? What's going on there? <laughs> <laughs> you know, yeah, so. I, I don't even use my Loxo number on any of my signatures and probably would behoove me to do that, right? <laughs> even though – because when they call it, it goes right to my grasshopper, right? If, when you call the, if I call someone from Loxo and it pops up on their screen, they call their ID. I think it's two o two something, and they call it right back. I have yeah. it forwarded to my lock to my grasshopper, so it get they get hi, you've reached Palermo Roads, press seven for Tom, yada yada yada. Yeah, so but I might want to start giving that number out. <laughs> yeah, and, and you just and you just call it office or whatever, you know. So it looks like you, yeah. you're legitimate. That's a good point. Yeah, that's a really good point. I never thought Tom, do you way. not have do you not have your Loxo voicemail message set up? So when they call no, in, no. yeah, you you should do no, that. We, yeah, 
because but, we, but then, we have nonetheless, all the employees that they, they go to the number when they call the number it goes to grasshopper and then whenever they hit the extension it goes to whoever person to your cell phone and then i use yeah, my you, cell phone voicemail yeah you have to you have to set it up so that it goes it stays within the, the locks of system or you can set it up so it goes directly to your mobile number which is much better to do because that way you don't miss out um, on any numbers. You you use the voicemail within Lockto? Yeah, if no, somebody calls I, me I back, don't. I have it set up to to uh, I have a recording on there with my voice and you know say you reached me and when I if somebody leaves me a voicemail message through Lockto, I get an email that comes in to let me know I have a voicemail. So what happens if another recruiters working and they leave a number and the person calls and they leave them a message you get it i will not it will be whoever the most recent phone call was that came into them whoever so made there, the most is, recent is phone call because we no we've actually had that happen a couple of times but um if i if i call and then you let's say you work with me and you turn around you call five minutes later if they call back it's more than likely it's going to go to your number because each so, phone number is a different number. Yeah. Each Loxo phone number is a different number for each, each we have Loxo every user. Every single one of my employees has the same phone number. No, we they, don't. they we have individual numbers. They can be each be assigned an individual number. Yeah. And but I, I will tell you one other thing. When you request your individual <laughs> number for that candidate or that that uh, that recruiter, ask for the same area code. The, oh, that, that big, I can't get 202. That's why we didn't do it. I can't get 202 anymore. It's DC. And it's a prime area code for DC. It's like trying to get 212 for New York. You can't mm -hmm. get them anymore. So if I got one for Melanie and one for Sage and one for Jeff mm -hmm. and one for whoever, then it would it would probably be 301 numbers yeah. or 240. So it yeah. wouldn't really match that. And the, the way that I looked at it, because I set up the grasshopper thing and the grasshopper is the same way. If they leave a message on grasshopper, like for some reason, if I'm talking on the phone, they can't get to my iPhone. It'll leave a message on grasshopper and that sends me an email. I pay like 20 bucks a month. I think for that, I get unlimited extensions. So Jeff's got an extension. Say, uh, Sage got an extension. Uh, Melanie's got an extension. And when you call 202-630-4814 or you call the Loxo number, it grasshopper will pick up and say, hi, you've reached Palermo Roads. It's my dumb voice. Uh, press 701 for Tom, 702 for Jeff, 703 for Mel or whatever. And when they hit 703 for Mel, it goes right to her cell phone. And then yeah. she'll get a voicemail on her cell phone or it'll go to Grasshopper if she's on the line and then send her an email saying you have a Grasshopper email. But but you are in that unique situation, probably the only unique the situation like that in the United States. And, and Which most one? Of, for most of us. In oh, the, the area code? The area yeah. Thing. So most of us can do it the other way where you just, but you got to tell them because they will assign random numbers to you. And so I have an 815. And then if I have a 312 come out because they just gave it to me, then it's all freaking weird. So I just so tell you have my, separate phone numbers for each one. Right now we're using our cell phones because we can't you, wrap our head around this phone. You, you, use, thing, so. you have, there's a Loxo phone number that they will assign to you for free. Mm -hmm. And one. The, well, I, I got four. <laughs> you each, ask them each, to each, each assign each a different number each. Yeah, they have their own user. number. Each one of the people yeah. that work with me have their own number. And all I did was tell them, make sure you get it for your area code. And I have somebody in, San, in the San Francisco Bay Area, got somebody in Texas, got somebody in New York, and I got somebody in Wisconsin that work with me. And they each have their own area code. And they basically use their cell phone but it when they <clears throat> dial out, it's no you dial out of Loxo. You dial you out dial Loxo. Of Loxo. You dial, dial out of Loxo. Loxo. But when no. they call back, when they call back, you can either stop it so it goes within Loxo, or or you can release it so it'll go directly to your phone number. Why aren't you calling out of Loxo, Caitlin? Because we're new and we haven't figured it out yet. And we're about to, me and my business partner are paying for our cell phones, but now we have two employees. So we're about to start paying for their cell phones. We're also in a very niche industry. And so a lot of our candidates and clients 
already have our phone numbers, so to switch, but we, we just got assigned a Loxo person. We just had our first call with them. So we're so okay. new, we're trying to figure it out. And we just talked today about, are we gonna pay their cell phone bills? And then we have five recruiters and we're paying five, six hundred dollars a month. Do, what, do kind of what I did, right? Either do what Ernie did or do what I did. So with, or with Ernie did is he got each recruiter a number. It is included in the cost of your seat. Right. So you can say to them, hey, I got a recruiter in Chicago. I got a, or you can say, I have all these recruiters, but I want them to have their own number and they'll give you your own number. The other thing is, check out Grasshopper. What you do is you take the Loxo number, right? And you use that as your office number. And then you each have your cell numbers. And then when someone calls the Loxo number, it'll go to Grasshopper. And then you can set Grasshopper up to go to each candidate's cell phone or their office phone or, uh, I, like I had it set at one time to go from my, my cell phone to Sage's cell phone, like when I was out of the office. So if I don't answer, she picks it up, right? So there's a lot of things you get. And Grasshopper's cost me $24 a month. I get, I don't know, I think I, like it said, it says you're only supposed to have 10 extensions. I had 15 at one time because I was messing around with it to see how far it would let me go. But it's a, it's a deal and a half, in my opinion, for what you get, because you get uh, the voicemail messages. You can set, each person can set up their own personalized voicemail. Hi, you've reached Mel. Hi, you've reached Jeff. Uh, you get the email saying when you get a, a voicemail, if you want to use that for your primary voicemail, say your cell phone, right? Because you can set up your iPhone in a way that if you're using something like Grasshopper, if you don't answer your iPhone, then it'll switch back to Grasshopper where you can leave a message. Tom, how do you have that set up with Grasshopper? Do you use the switch in Loxo to bypass or how so, does that work? Because when I started the company, I had a Google Voice. When I first started, I had Google Voice, Google Sheets, to Google everything, right? Didn't even have an ATS. And 202-630-4814 is still my Google Voice number. And that is a number that's on all our business cards, all of our uh, periodicals, everything, right? So now, if you call the 202-630-4814 number, it transfers to my Grasshopper number, which is 301-something-something-something. Also, if you call the Loxo number, right? If you call from Loxo and the caller ID shows your Loxo number and someone calls that number back, that also points to Grasshopper. No, it points to the, the um, Google Voice number and that sends it to Grasshopper. So everything goes to Grasshopper, right? Anybody calls the 202 number or calls the Loxo number, they automatically go to Grasshopper. And then once Grasshopper answers, then you can pick who you want to talk to. So like Ernie said, we did a test, our, our coordinator did a test and it came up on my phone. It said Loxo call or something. And we were like, well, that's you know, you, Yeah, you need to let them know, like you wanted to come up your city or your state, or I think mine comes up, you know, Washington, DC. Like yeah, if, if somebody have a phone, I'll, I'll test it real quick, tell you what mine comes up. Um, what is, uh, somebody give me a number with a caller ID, anyone? We have a cell phone on them right now that oh, they can look at. Yeah. 914. 914- 914. 999. 999. 4066. 4066. 914-299-4066. Yeah. So it just What's says it, say? 202. it has the number and then it says Washington, DC. Yeah, so that's that's what mine comes up. It's a 202 number. Now, mm -hmm. you know, a lot of people don't answer. I don't care if it says Washington, D.C., Loxo, Alasio, Palermo Roads. People don't answer their phone sometimes if they don't recognize a number. I cool. like that it says Washington, D.C., but you know, I've got people say, why is the president calling me? Right. When I when I call them, I'll get people will answer the phone going, why is the president calling me? Or, or why is the CIA calling me? Or why is the FBI calling me? Right. And then I'll laugh and say I'm a headhunter, which is worse. Yada, yada, yada. <laughs> but definitely get them to change that. Get rid of the Loxo call thing. You want the city, state, wherever you are. Thanks. And and just so you know, you can dial from Loxo. Like I just dialed your number from the keypad. I didn't even click your name or anything, right? So they have that's an option too within Loxo. You can just dial a number, any random number you want from Loxo. You can dial, click the call from it, SMS to call, and then I, I, look, I, I understand what Ernie's saying. I wish we could figure out a way that if we called someone from our cell phones, it was somehow connected to Loxo. That would be, I talk to my cell phone more than anything. I would love that. But, you know, and then, they, but that just means you have to move them through the workflow yourself. 
Well, and then also but, if you're not behind your computer, so say you're working remote or something or you run out, then if you're not on your computer, you can't call them back until you're at your computer. Exactly. Right. But that's that's why when you do that sort of thing, you want to put their number. If you're communicating with them and you've had some conversation with them already, that's why I put their number on my on my cell phone. Like I'll put yours and say, Caitlin, this is Caitlin's number. So when, when you call me later on, I don't just see a number. I'll say, okay, that's Caitlin. I know exactly. And I need to get back to her. And the company name, I'll sometimes put the job. Right, like yeah. uh, John Smith, Steel Sales Rep, Chicago, uh, Valley Joist. Right, that way, I when it pops up, I'll see that and know who's calling. It, it makes life a little easier. So, yeah, yeah. I mean, in a perfect world, yeah, wouldn't it be great if your Loxo contacts somehow synced to your phone, your cell phone? You know, that would be fan because that was the cool thing about Google Voice, right? So I had Google Voice synced to my cell phone, and it that was fantastic. It, every contact. Got synced to Google Voice, got synced to my cell phone. The voicemail that I was using was not the iPhone voicemail. It was the Google Voicemail, right, that transcribed it, it, sent me a text, and sent me an email anytime I had a this – and this was all free back when Google Voice came out. So that now, was that was great for running the business. The, the other thing I'll add with that, a little bit of offshoot on that, is I also use Mighty Text. And Mighty Text will help me on my computer if, uh, do, do – a do texting that I can I can do on on the computer and it'll sync all of my phone numbers into their system and also save all of my pictures and everything else however from what I understand with Adam mighty text does not do Apple it only does Android so I'm sure there's one that does Apple equally as well but I just I again I have mighty text just because if my phone goes out for some crazy reason and I get some delays or whatever, I at least have access to the phone numbers. And uh, oh. the, the whole game here is, do you have backup to the backup to the backup? Because <laughs> you never know. Hey, uh, Adam, you work with Ernie, right? Yes. Okay. And so your, how does your California number come up? Um, when you call someone right now it's coming up as spam oh we didn't <laughs> get that fixed then <laughs> well i've been trying but they don't they they're not responsive really um i don't well, i'm I don't just really, telling you that oh my god with i, I really yeah, don't like their customer service uh, ernie you need to jump into that because he's part of your team and you have four seats according to Loxo, so you need to jump in and jump on them on that one. Oh, I do. I do have that happening. What happened was they had something. If you're talking about the, is there, is there a phone number that? He's dialing out of Loxo and it's not coming up Chicago. It's coming up spam. Right? Like, so Caitlin says yeah. it comes up Loxo. Nick, what does yours come up? Uh, I'm not sure. It, I know it comes up. Uh, my situation is different. I have uh, my number that I've used for 15 years forwarded to the Loxo number, which is also picks up on Ring Central. Because my problem was yeah, I, I could I never hear the phone ring. Too. I could never hear the phone ring. Um, so Outbound, it has the number, the Ring Central number on it, which is, okay. I guess, the same That's as Loxo. That's actually a good idea. That's a good idea because I, I actually consider forwarding my Ring number Central. number two. I used Ring Central before and I had constant problems with it. You know, really? problems with it. It froze up on my phone all the time. I had to uninstall, re reinstall. It was super annoying. I have had no no problems whatsoever. They've been phenomenal. Hmm. And and the phone I, calls inbound phone calls log in Loxo as an inbound call. Oh well, yeah, yeah. That, that's just the yeah Loxo. I, I, I'm wondering maybe. Like for Adam, maybe you, if you have a number that you're known, not your cell phone, but maybe another number, you ask them to port that in to Loxo that you're known by, right? Because I'm thinking right, right now, maybe I should I should port my 202-630-4814 number in. Because no one knows right. by the other number, yeah. and I don't use Google Voice anymore, but I still own that number. Adam, well, is that yeah, phone number? Years is my Adam? number, so that, I'm sorry, go ahead, Tom. The phone number that you have for Loxo, is that an, uh, uh, recently... 
uh, issued phone number for you? Yeah, it was issued what last year, Ernie. Yeah. Oh, okay. Oh, and somebody and probably reported. Yeah, somebody probably reported Thanks. a spam. So, mm -hmm. you, what you might want to do, Ernie, getting... is maybe maybe have Loxo issue him a different phone number. Adam, new phone what's, line what's number. Your line yeah, old, phone number. Let's get one thing straight. All of the people that work with me are independent contractors. They're not my employees. So each one of us gives our own right. within Loxo. Yeah. And so, so. But aren't you guys I, on the same seat where you can see each other's stuff? Yes, we're on the same Loxo board. But we, we're, yeah, we're, so, all, we're, we're revolutionary. We're, we're, we're cutting edge. We have, <laughs> we have independent contractors. They all get a large percentage of what any basement they make. I mean, they get their own job orders and their own their own uh, uh, candidates. They get ninety percent. I get ten percent. Yeah. You know, and so it's it's a well, that's what you're ten. You get the ten percent for is a call lock, so up and pitch at them. That's worth the well, yeah, no, no, I, I, I know there's all that, but you know, <laughs> but what we all do is we run it independently, and they all have access and authority to call whoever they need to call. All right. Because they're aware of it. Adam, what's your phone number? Uh, let me see here. Adam. <laughs> Does anyone know their Loxo phone number? It's um yeah, I know 707 707 Um and that uh CK plumbing used to have it. Yeah. Well, seven zero seven six zero seven eight five four nine was owned by Seco Plumbing, and and yeah. what we've had what we have had problems with, and they're addressing, but they haven't fixed is with the texting. And what's then going on with that? Need to fit. It's not working. I I think and did you sign all the using... disclosure bullshit? I I just signed all this. I mean, I've sent it to yeah. them, and they're saying they're trying to process it, and. Uh, I'm yeah, talking I think they're the, still. I think they're still using a third party for SMS and phone. They were using Twilio. I still think they're using Twilio. So I think when you reach out to Loxo, they got in turn reach out to Twilio. Yeah, and and, the, heard, and the thing was when, when we did that, when we did that, uh, they told me they could do it without me having a if I a, a, a federal income tax number, and I told them I don't have one primarily because it's me and everybody else. We're independent contractors, so we're like a co-op, and they all take care of their own business, and they all pay their own bills, and they all do. You know, it's like running shots, but for the co-op purposes, we're together. Kind of like a uh, so dairy why farmer. Can't, why can't you just get Loxo to issue another number and then forward the current one to the new one? Be simple and yeah, over you can. quick. Yeah, if you, if you tell them that, they're, that you're getting sand, they should probably issue you a new number. Um, I heard that now, if you sign up with Loxo, you don't get the phone and the um, SMS. You have to pay for that separately through a, a Twilio, Twilio or whatever the hell Tom called. Has anybody heard that? Somebody mentioned that on the. I saw that too. Today. I didn't quite understand that. You know, we're we're uh, this extra charge, but but it says if, if you go on there, be, it says all inclusive still on their website. Yeah, but if that's if they're going that route, that's going the route of 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 Crelate. And I think that's where some of us who are Loxo users got away from Creed because they started adding down pieces. So here's just well, one piece that's cheap. And that is why I signed more. up with Loxo. It was all yeah. inclusive. I paid one yeah, price you, and got everything I needed. What, when I signed up with Loxo, the agreement says that they have the right to do that. Well, no, they do. So they don't. They have the right to, even though they don't, right to take your they have, first they have born the child. right to do that yeah, based I mean, on the but, agreement. But it's, it's like we're renters. And they're the landlord, and the landlord can change anything whenever the hell they want, like raise the rent, do this, do that. It's the same thing. We have the right to move to another database if we have to. So that's why I think this is important, because on the day we decide to move, then the hell all of us are going to move. And we say, we've done it, and <laughs> you guys have screwed us enough. But if you don't, then that's cool. We're happy. What? One of the good I'm, things I'm about... Ring central is that when my number rings at my desk phone, I can also have it ring on my cell phone. So no matter